When you first start learning software development, it is very, very easy to get lost into the details of the programming language that you are learning without having an idea of the big picture in your mind of what you are going to build and who is going to use your end product. So in this video, I decided to explain the key points of the software development production workflow from the development phase um, to the production phase. I will also explain some of the technologies that we can use uh, in every step and why every step exists and the details of uh, every step and why everything is there. So if you are interested, keep watching and I'll see you inside. Hello my friends, this is Mark Maxi and this is my YouTube channel. If you are interested in learning about web development from coding to production, make sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified about more videos like this in the future and let's get started. So I told you that I wanted to discuss about the software development production workflow from the development up to the uh, production phase. So let's assume we have a company here and inside of this company I have different teams in the development um, phase. So in the development section, we have front-end developers, we have back-end developers, we have teams working on React or Python or Node.js. And uh, usually, uh, this is the professional um, workflow in my opinion. Uh, in the, uh, in the uh, development phase, the developers, uh, after, when they write their, their code, when they, are, when they write their features or develop their features, they also write tests that test these features. Uh, I know many teams don't, don't implement testing. I worked in a team that didn't implement any kind of testing and actually it was horrible. But yeah, uh, it happens in, in the uh, work environment that uh, some teams don't include any testing. But in my opinion, the professional way of doing things is to uh, write tests to whatever feature you are developing. So if you are front-end developers, you write uh, unit tests, you, you can write API tests if you are Node.js Node developer or backend developer. There is also something called integration tests, which um, uh, tests how the functionality that you are developing actually uh, works with other functionalities. So usually what you are responsible of is uh, seeing how your code, whatever feature that you developed, uh, and you test that specific feature, and after you, uh, after you build your feature or uh, develop and uh, finish developing your feature, you push your code to something called a CI pipeline. And there are many types, and there are many uh, brands in CI pipelines. We have, for example, GitHub Actions. We have Travis CI. We have Jenkins. Uh, we have different stuff. But usually, uh, not usually. I mean. Uh, currently, uh, there is there is a kind of trend that people are using GitHub Actions because it leaves with the with your code on on GitHub. You don't need to go to some outside service and pay some money because some services like Travis CI is is not free anymore. It used to be free, but now it's uh, it's paid. So uh, GitHub Actions, you can go to GitHub Actions and whatever you whatever code that you push from your local in local environment or local computer, you push that after you run your tests, you push that to the CI pipeline. The CI pipeline, or uh, it's, a, uh, it's, a, it's a pipeline of steps, okay? A pipeline of steps, and these steps are automated. Uh, CI, by the way, means continuous, continuous integration. So uh, this pipeline is a series of steps that they are these steps run automatically so they are automated automated steps but you can run any kind of logic that you want uh, any kind of automated logic and uh, this kind this logic that you write will be executed on something called an event or action for example uh, you can you can write a pipeline that says i want you to run all the tests uh, in, in the repository or all the tests in the software after, um, after the push is to any branch other than the main branch. This is a very common uh, CI pipeline, by the way. Uh, it is very common that we can define a pipeline that says whenever you push any code to any branch other than the main branch, I want you to, write the t uh, to run the tests. So uh, you might ask yourself, why should I run the tests? Uh, because I already run tests uh, on my local system, so why should I run it again in the CI pipeline? Uh, because the reason is because we want to know how 
um, and the entire software uh, is functioning because we might uh, develop a feature that breaks other features who knows so we need to run tests for the entire application not only for the only the feature that we uh, developed on our system so anyway we have this ci pipeline um, once once the ci pipeline runs and executes the logic or runs the runs the tests it gives uh, it gives the f the development teams feedback and this feedback is either green or red and it's actually green and red like you can see the green and the red light uh, on github actions if you are familiar with github actions if you are not it's not a big problem but just imagine that there are there is a, a green dot and there is a red dot a green dot means that the ci pipeline runs uh, well and everything in the pipeline runs as expected and if it was red it means the pipeline is not running as expected so what's the point of red and green if it was green if sorry if it was red it means that the developer the whoever pushes push the code to that specific branch okay has to update their code because there is something wrong and they get they get some errors they, the error feedback saying that yeah your your code breaks this code or something like that so they will know what they have to work on in order to get the green light so once they get the green light as a feedback from the ci pipeline that means the code now is ready to be reviewed by some uh, other developer through a pull request so usually some other developer like a senior developer or so on um, gets to review your code and if the developer uh, accepts your code or the reviewer accepts your code the code will be merged into the main branch and once it's merged into the main branch here we can also define multiple things what what can happen for example if it was merged into the main branch we can update this staging environment the staging environment is actually an environment to test uh, internally by the um, by the people who we are working for which are stakeholders or business owners and there might be also qa teams quality assurance teams uh, people who assure that uh, what we are developing is uh, uh, actually uh, satisfies the quality requirements of our product or our solution so um, yeah this is the staging environment and the staging environment actually mimics the same environment of the production other than it uses fake um, fake databases uh, so we don't use the real database of course because we don't need to play with the database of real users we want to play with some um, uh, some fake database okay just for testing and uh, after that we have also the production the production phase in the production phase uh, it happens usually after the staging environment is set up and the stakeholders and qa team or teams uh, accept the the features that we have developed and once they uh, accept that they tell the development teams to yeah push to production once they push to production that's when end users or the final users can finally benefit from using our uh, our features or the features that we have developed and uh, you have you you should also notice that here in this uh, arrow it is back and forth arrow because the development team and the stakeholders and Q, uh, quality assurance team uh, usually contact each others and stay in contact to um, uh, to tell each others what they are working on and uh, it's it's a uh, there is there is a specificity about that because they have to contact and they have to uh, make sure that wh whatever the developers are working on actually uh, makes sense by the stakeholders uh, not developing something that doesn't make sense okay so um i also told you that for for uh, the pipeline once the pipeline runs fun fine and the and uh, the uh, code is merged into the main branch we can also define something else inside the pipeline we can say that once any code is merged into the main branch we want the the deployment to happens automatically to production we might want that who knows because uh, sometimes we need to automate all the steps without going into this this step of um, checking checking or manually checking or manually testing everything uh, because the stakeholders might do that uh, while we are developing the the feature or while we are developing the um, the application 
but it's not it's not the main it's not the case for every product to push for production some products um, don't need to product to push for production uh, once once the the feature is merged into the main branch uh, for example if you are developing a product about medical medical product medical uh, information uh, you need to be very uh, very delicate and very um, cautious about what you are dealing with because you don't want you don't want to push something to production uh, with with uh, errors uh, sometimes errors are tolerable sometimes are not so if they are not tolerable you have to run a lot of manual testing like in in the case of uh, some medical product or you are dealing with patients or patients information because you don't want to make any mistakes or ma- any errors in 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 that case so this is a general idea. I hope I gave you a general idea of this entire um, development phase and the staging and the production because it's an entire workflow. It's an iteration. You have to think about it as an iteration because the end users also uh, give feedback and we ask the users to give feedback so the developers um, work more or improve or do whatever they have to do in order to uh, satisfy the end users. It's a, it's a loop. Uh, it's an ever never ending loop um, you have to develop and work with stakeholders because actually you are working for two people this or two kind of people the stakeholders who are going to benefit from selling the product and also for the end users because the end users are the ones who are going to uh, benefit from uh, solving some kind of problem so i hope i gave you this uh, general overview of how everything works because I don't want you to lock your mindset or fix your mindset on I am a React developer or I am back-end developer or I'm front-end developer. You have to understand the big picture and how everything works together so that you become the best developer that every team wants uh, in, in, their, in their presence. And finally, I want to tell you that I have content about everything, almost everything you see here on the screen. Uh, for example, if you are interested in testing and see how testing works, I have an entire series on testing. I know testing is not the best thing people seek uh, when learning web development, but um, uh, probably you can guess now that it's a, it's a crucial step. So if you are interested in learning testing, make sure to check out my playlist uh, right here on the screen. And also, I have, I have written content about Docker. Uh, some content about Node.js and JavaScript in general. About Docker, uh, I have a few videos about Docker and Kubernetes, which are um, yeah in DevOps and in backend and DevOps. So also make sure to check out that in order to get to get an idea of what these technologies are. Even if you are not interested, even if you mainly um, front end developer, make sure to check out that. And uh, what else? If you are interested in having AWS, for example, if you're Docker container, for in this case, this application runs in a container in, in, in AWS, and you want to learn about AWS, I have written like four or six um, blog posts on my blog on Hashnode about AWS. It is uh, those posts, I mean, they are uh, totally beginner friendly and they are totally, I'm, I'm totally satisfied about the content I, write, I wrote about AWS. So make sure to check out that. You can see the link to all the playlists and Docker and everything. You can see the, those links down in the description box below. And finally, if you are interested in my content, if you, and if you see my content useful, I, I really appreciate it if you buy me a cup of coffee by the link that you can see down below also in the description box because that will support me and support my uh, content and encourage me to make more content in the future thank you very much for watching uh, take care of yourselves and i see you very soon